and we are live hello hello everyone thank you for joining me back here i am alana i go by afro butterfly and i'm so honored today to have the amazing dynamic beautiful wonderful sydney davis here with me this young woman has done so many things amazing things in her lifetime in addition to being the owner and creator of nix code which is an easy plug and play no code solution software she has done TED Talks. She's literally traveled the world and shown people how to use this amazing piece of technology. It's my honor to be able to highlight her as a title sponsor at our upcoming event coming in March, March 25th and 26th at Florida Memorial University. We'll be down there showing people in the community how to get involved in tech and showing them that they can get the ideas that are in their head out of their head and into app format. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Sydney, for being here this morning. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here and show some cool things. Absolutely. If you want to check out her website, you can go to nixcodeapps.com. And there's a free demo on there where you can go as well and play with the software. You can make your own apps. And there's so many different features on there that you can put in there that you should go explore it. But I'm super excited. I'm super excited, Sydney. And additionally, anyone in the Miami area, if you happen to be in Miami, March 25th and 26th, this is a free event. You should come out and learn how to play with this type of tech. So the sign up link for that for you to grab your event bright tickets is BC, the number two, and then bc.org, blue collar to the blockchain, slash Miami 2023. You wanna go ahead and grab your tickets. We already have signups going. So come out and join us. So what I will do now is share screen, uh, share Sh Sydney's screen so she can show us some amazing things that you're able to do with next Awesome. All right. Hope you're able to see my screen. I just want to show you some cool things, some amazing founders um, and innovators have decided to build with no code and using Xcode's platform. Um, and I'll try to give us a nice diversity of some things, um, a lot around, you know, content and um, pipelining and creating communities. Um, and of course, that's how we mostly use apps these days. This first one I love and is super cool um, and it's called Zero to Wear. Um, and this is where people wanted to organize their closet items and be able to share and upload items and be able to create looks. So you're able to have upload screens for users to be able to uh, take pictures at assets to create closets for organization. And when they're in there, be able to have uh, a list of, you know, items that they would like to wear and then uh, style them. So this is where once you have the images that you have created, um, you can pair and match things together. Okay. And you know, how cool is that? So thus far, even just looking at this, if someone's watching along with us, they'd be like, how did they make that with Nixcode? So how, what did they yeah, use yeah. to be able to make this kind of app? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a couple templates. So you want to pick, ones that have profiles and data cards. These are ones that will allow you to connect to a spreadsheet to start adding data to. And then we use web views to create that, uh, put that spreadsheet right into your app. Um, if you know a little bit of CSS, you can style it to look how you want it to work. Um, but most of how Nixco work, if you're similar to actually website builders like uh, Squarespace or uh, WordPress, there's plugins that actually have each of these screens that you saw predefined. Um, so I'm just going to call this my look. Uh, so a lot of the code is actually pre-built for you. You're able to have those things ready to go. Um, all you do is customize the design, the settings, the, the payment screens, the security, and then turn off the settings that you like. And then you're able to see the looks that you put together. That's really cool. So something as simple as like taking pictures, which everyone does all day long. Everyone's a selfie king, selfie queen. <laughs> but taking that concept and saying, oh, let me take pictures of the items that I own so that no matter where I am, even if I'm not in front of my closet, I can choose an outfit for today. That's really cool. Absolutely. One of my favorites. Um, so another one that I actually built uh, myself is called Four Founders. Um, but it's also where I like to just kind of demo and test things um, and launch private beta testing. But this is a community um, where it helps people to find funding resources and also connect with investors. 
Um, so having, you know, chats and socializations, um, podcasts, uh, finding resources to capital, such as funding opportunities, uh, an investor list of those who you can make introductions to and find them by industry and what kind of check sides as they write. Um, finding programs such as accelerator programs and incubators that have capital available. Um, then, of course, resources like courses, tips, and then finding, you know, black and brown VCs um, that invest in people of color. So it's really a good network to kind of find people who can get you accelerated on your capital journey. Um, this uses plugins such as people. And actually, a lot of this is people. And so what's interesting is that even though it's supposed to be like a people directory, you can use it for listing places. You can do it for listing opportunities. So just because something always has a name designated to it doesn't mean you're restricted to do that only. Um, you're able to also um, put in videos, YouTube streams as well. Um, let's see here. We have um, barcode scanner. Uh, let's see if I have something close by to test this with and show you. Um, let's see, let's see yeah, I have some of this. So uh, scan cameras, you can see me scanning there. And then you can have this pull up your items and it'll price compare for you as well as tell you where to go buy it. And then you can link it out to uh, Target. <laughs> And then boom, it'll tell you where to buy a 49 near you. Hold up, you just changed the game. You just changed the game up. <laughs> <laughs> Not price talking out 884. <laughs> hold up, hold up. Okay. I don't know if y'all watching have quite captured what just happened. <laughs> this young lady has made a software, Nixcode, which allows you, the user at home, to easily build an app. You don't know how to have to have to know how to code. You no literally can come in here and drag and drop the different elements that you want inside of an app into an app. We just literally looked at an app that she made using Nix code and she scanned, barcode scanned the same jar aquifer I got sitting over there on my counter <laughs> and found the price of it. And now I know where to go buy it and what aisle it's on. Ma'am. Ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you like it, you can save it. Uh, you have all your saved items from previous searches, uh, your search history. And if there's an item you don't have to scan, you can find it here. Um, we'll just do Dove. Anyways, there's all kinds of things. And so it doesn't even have to be body. It could be uh, appliances. It could be furnishing things. It could be anything. It could be toys. So if you want to have a scanner for toy comparison, beauty products, home furnishings, medical devices, any of that. As long as it's a barcode, it can work. So in theory, if I was a random person who knew nothing about coding and I walked in off the street to this wonderful event that we're having, yeah. and I said, I want to make an app where I can price compare all the baby food in my area. I could do that with Nick's code. You could. What? Y'all. Okay. Even I, it's funny because I know the extent of what you can do with this thing but every time you show me something new my brain is like huh <laughs> right girl so, show me something else oh this is amazing oh my god yeah good good thing you know what i haven't really tried oh, food does come up <laughs> it's like i haven't tried food searches before but yes right i'm looking for baby food and lord knows looking for baby formula is a channel like a baby formula finder would be amazing <laughs> with how they've been running out of formulas, etc. So yes, a barcode scanner is really cool. Just drag and drop and then you'll just go grab an API. So it's one of the APIs that we have available um, because, so I don't know, and just real briefly, I won't get too technical. We'll just talk a little bit about APIs. This means there's a third party who has information that either is gonna send or post and you wanna either send or post to your app from that software. And that's how our scanner test works. There's actually a software company out here who has a database of all these things. And we want to basically scan and like pull the information from them to our app. So that's what the API does. It pulls from the third party into your app. Okay. It doesn't post the content back there. It stays right there in your app. Um, and so usually mo most APIs are paid. So you do as a founder, you know, you're paying for every time someone scans. Um, but this is why you want to set up these things to be monetized in the app. And this is where you can set up paywalls to accept payment um, 
before you let people start using the tool, especially if you have to pay out of pocket. So just something to, to consider. Am I logged in? No, that's a really cool feature. The other question I guess I've had people ask me are how do you know what APIs are available to you? Like with Nixcode, what are some of the APIs that I could possibly put into this app that I'm creating? So most APIs, again, are going to be anything that you need to pull or post. So you say, hey, I really want I need, you need to pull data. Do you need to pull location? So Google Maps API. So Google has a few APIs. One of the commons one we use is geocoding um, API. This is allows you to um, be able to like put in the address and it pulls the filter addresses and things like that. Uh, but places, so it also can find things searching in a distance near you. Um, so maybe not to find your address, but to find other addresses. So that's going to be two different APIs. Um, and so to prepare for that, you want to make sure you at least have a Google uh, account. And when I say Google, not Gmail, but like a Google developer account and in the Google console, and then you'll just set up Google billing. You don't get charged, but they just like to have something on file. Um, and then you want to go grab those API keys. The other API is like Barco Lookup because we're pulling data. You need an API key. If you're looking to bring an e-commerce like Shopify, you'll need a secret key um, from Shopify. Um, so anything that's third party, like a MetaMask or um, a barcode scanner or Google, if it's third party that needs to facilitate the operation, you say, oh, this requires another software. I need to go get an API from over there. And that's how you know what APIs you'll need. It's going to depend on the third party list of, we'll have, when you go into our software, you'll see list of third parties. Uh, and obviously their brand like Calendly and Jotform. Some of these things you'll need an API for. And one of the coolest things before we get to some other examples is how innovative tech is. I'm, I'm at Miami Hack Week this week. So I'm down in Miami attending some different UX UI panels and developer panels and all these cool things. And one of the, the most notable quotes that stuck out to me was, it's not learning one particular thing which makes you useful is being able to adapt because software is constantly updating mm -hmm. so what i think you've done here which is so brilliant with nix code you literally can come in here and make any kind of app and you can always keep updating the api keys you can always keep abreast with new technology as it's coming out so people can have the latest up, most updated version of their app possible i think that's really cool Yes, I agree. I'm super excited to see what people will come up with um, in this space. And the other thing that you tackled, so when we first met, um, your app was primarily around some of the more um, automation type Web3 things, like making things easier, like pulling from an API key or even a tie-in from MailChimp or something like that. But you went as far to to uh, do a little research on something I requested, which is heading into Web3 and crypto payments. Yeah. And could you touch a little bit on what you've done with MetaMask and Nixcode? Yes. Yeah, so we've been able to allow the app to... So what we've learned is you do have to have a MetaMask account set up. You can't create a new MetaMask through our app, but if you have one, you'll create a MetaMask account. And then in the app, if the user says, I want to connect, they'll be forced to open the MetaMask account and authorize the connection. And then now that MetaMask account will also render into their app. So in the side menu, they can have something that says MetaMask and they can authorize the connection and disconnect it anytime as well from the app. Um, so that's something too, that you'll have an API and that way people can authorize your app permission to access their MetaMask credentials privately, securely. Uh, and that will allow them to then see all their transactions, make transactions as well by using their wallet. Um, I will say this, so it depends on if it's web-based, this is really good. The only thing is um, Apple and Google. So if you're trying to like, you're serious, like I'm gonna launch an app in the app stores, Apple and Google, you know, they they make billions of dollars a year and they make it from in-app purchasing in US dollars. And they quite have it start saying, yep, you could pay Apple, we'll take your payments in crypto. They're not quite there yet. So the only thing is if you're charging people with cryptocurrency, it needs to be a service base or B2B like, hey, you paid to cut my hair, I'll pay you type of thing. It's not like to unlock some app features, I can pay in crypto because Apple does not accept crypto for in-app payments. It's like Apple Music. 
it's on us dollars to pay for your subscription you can't pay them not nice. bitcoin not yet i think uh, hopefully they'll get to it in the future that's a great explanation and yeah. as we're heading oh my bad i think there's some lag on my end i apologize oh, you're good. am i back am i back Yes. Okay. My bad. No, I think that's really, really uh, notable commentary because that's where a lot of businesses um, sort of got stalled out in innovation in this space. So we figured that it would be B2B or peer to peer. But as they're gearing up to do something called central bank digital currencies or CBDCs, the government's trying to make Bitcoin. I'm sure that, that landscape will change in the next two or three years. But it's even cool that we even have that as an option. So what's this that we're looking at here on screen? Um, this is just social cards and then it's communities where if you wanted to swipe and find other people, you can. You can swipe cards and find them. Uh, so of course people can join groups and if you wanna match, they can see your profile and just swipe through and connect through seeing members. Um, you can customize this for your own settings to how you want people to connect. They can start chatting with people um, they can follow them. So kind of like social media. I'll just test this, this one. Get over here. I'll just send a direct message. Not Dr. Dre. <laughs> and then we can have a back and forth message. Um, as well, so chat is already in there. Inbox management is already defaulted into our app builder. Um, I'll show you another uh, scope of community, another app built with Xcode called Black Girls Guide. It is a guide to all things for Black girls to find self-love and self-actualization. Um, so a lot of community networking, podcasts, journaling. I'll show you a few features. Um, journaling by topic, you can view your notes, bookmarks, and I'll show you kind of journaling a little bit. Some prompt questions and you can add notes. And then done. And I can go back and read my notes. So and... you could literally make a journaling app, a diary. You could make a dating app. You could make a marketplace. You could make a streaming app. You literally can make any kind of app. Um, this is really good too for those who want to replicate something like Masterclass. People, we also have like a video task manager. Uh, so you can do like videos and people can check off their progress in the videos and then add notes. They can, um, record or save where they want to go to. Um, and this is really good for those users to kind of then have that notebook, like seminar and lecture notes, whether you're a university or education people who could take mobile notes as well. Those are some beautiful graphics. Thank you. Um, well, what's one of the what's one of the most interesting API keys that you've enjoyed using thus far? It would probably be that barcode scanner. I I enjoy it, and we're always expanding it. Um, the barcode scanner is just really cool. Um, that's probably one of my favorite APIs. The it's not an API per se, but it's an integration that we have. I also like type form because they came out with something similar called video ask and video ask allows you to do pre-recorded questions and people can respond back in audio and it'll transcribe it into text and you can use that to give them the next video so it's almost like virtual help desk with a video um you can actually start using this to do a logic based because we're working on a few ai things so you can use to start training your ai by start setting up logic first um, and we also have integrations with Intercom. That's another API slash integration. And they can also have bots. So this is where you can do bots to help answer questions, kind of like a chat, a GPT, um, to kind of help people find solutions and get answers that they're looking for. So we have a lot of people who do Medicare and medical type apps where people can put in like symptom checkers and symptoms. And then the bot can kind of help you with a diagnosis or if you need to schedule and speak to someone immediately for a virtual call. Um, so that's, those are some, some things too. So those are like a couple of my favorite and common ones that people are starting to lean to, um, as there's one to create apps around AI, um, and apps around product discovery, because more apps are coming around CPG. 
I can imagine, and especially as we explore those Web3 concepts like AI, machine learning, automations, it these things are becoming a necessary part of life. Like, oh, one of my mentors told me the other day he used Chat GPT to help him write a eulogy. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but it was it was so it was pertinent. Me and oh my, my partner was just like, you know what? When I pass away, I need you to write my my obituary with AI. <laughs> Let's see what it comes up with. Yes. It takes the guesswork out. It makes it a little it less a little less stressful. But no, I'm really looking forward to this. So as far as some basic stats, how how long would you think it would take an average person who's never utilized your software before to build out the shell of a basic app if they were doing it by themselves? Um, I would say a standard basic, very, very, very new, even, even to web building space, I would say two weeks. You have a little web building experience. You've done things like WordPress, course, page, page, and stuff, set up your own Shopify, probably seven days or less. And if you have space with other no-code builders and web spaces, you can probably knock it out in a day. A lot of these things I've, I've built apps within hours. I'm of course MVP level concepts. Um, Nick's code really takes a lot of the guesswork out of it just because so much of it has been built for you. Well, I'm really looking forward to the hackathon portion that we're having. So a lot of people are like, what's a hackathon? Uh, don't let that word intimidate you. Hackathon just means that you have people coming together who are interested in building a concept or an idea. And whatever prompt we give you or whatever task we give you, you're up to the task of knocking it out. This particular hackathon is a no code hackathon, meaning you don't need to know any programming languages, any type of coding languages. You can literally come use a lot of the amazing automations that Nixcode already has built in, pull in those API keys and make something here. Uh, the, the whole premise is whoever has the best idea and can get it as far along as possible can win prizes. We have some great prizes lined up here. We have some great speakers lined up here. And as we get closer, we'll start debuting a lot of the bounties that we have. There are cash prizes available, scholarships, education, mentorship to different roles inside of tech. And we really want to help just immerse the community inside of tech just to expose people to it. Even if you don't decide to go this route, I think these are good concepts and good things to know. And you never know what you're capable of. You never know. I agree. I agree. Ooh, is this like a daily? What does this one do? So this is a photo sharing um, a social app. So kind of similar to the ones we use today. Um, and this is where you can find trending things, trending pictures by tags, um, posts people have made, um, and then also find and follow people, um, repost and reshare things, comment on them, um, share their post, and then you can, of course, create posts. <laughs> so just social media type things um if that's something tag a location tags and people um, post it and then also you can have user profiles where people can see your post again and things you've been tagged in of course your repost as well um and then inbox management all those cool things um check your followers and following so for followers following three people social media type stuff um so you can create something as simple as that social media and maybe add a few games, maybe some interesting content in there. Uh, we've had people do specific communities around like hip hop. So discussions, people who are really fans of that uh, tech based communities, web three based communities, uh, kind of like all the other social groups, like, you know, WhatsApp chats and group me. So you can kind of use this same concept through a lot of our community plugins. And that's that's all I wanted to show you today and hopefully start to get you think it's about some really cool ideas um, and how you can begin to use Nick's code to create your next brilliant idea. Yep. And I think that was a, a phenomenal demo. There's so many problems that we can solve with these things as well, because even if you're not a very uh, coding savvy individual, if you're able to create solutions like this with the prefix things that are already here, 
we all just heard that Twitter's about to start charging everybody. We need another social media app or a place to congregate. Yeah. Not to mention that barcode feature in my brain is on fire. <laughs> I want to go sign up for like 10 million things. I swear. I know, right? I know, right? Yeah. And so there's the ability to add reviews and read reviews, you know. So this is, I mean, you could really replicate things like a Yelp, um, different uh, product searches, product ordering, like, you know, Instacart or, ship, uh, or shipped, you know, but, you know, finding products and going straight to the site where it is, so you can go get it yourself and or, you know, request to have it shipped or ordered to you. Um, we have a couple music streaming things. So you can go grab some music and stream profiles and create, people can create playlists, podcast playlists, music playlists. Um, there's a lot of great opportunities in there. And one thing I like about Nick's Code's control panel, it's very all in one. So apps have a lot more because you got like onboarding screens, like login and security. And then like, I want people to log in with Google, log in with your Gmail. All that's defaulted in there. You don't need to go grab additional APIs for that. A lot of things that would require those connections, some of them are defaulted and available. Some of them you will have to go set up an API for, but most of them are already in there. You don't need to go grab Firebase accounts. You've got push notifications right in there. Just enable your certificates. Everything's all in one. You don't need to manage multiple tools to use Nixcode. Mostly everything is all into one. So I'm so excited for the event coming up. So that day we'll have a few workshops in the morning. Um, in addition to people who show up, there's going to be a live resume rewrite. So if you're looking to break into tech or you're looking to update your resume, we'll have someone on site who will educate you on how to do that. Um, we have some people coming out to tell you about mentorship inside of the tech space and how to find a mentor for the job that you want to do. Uh, we have a panel on what to do when you're a founder and you're creating ideas like this, how to protect yourself inside of the space. Sydney herself will be showing you a little bit more in depth how to use some of the Nick's code tools and um, just preparing people who are going to do the hackathon portion, how they can help build out or ideate things. And then from there, we'll have bounties and prizes to give away. There'll be food, there'll be music. We're super excited. So y'all definitely come out. Again, the link to sign up. For March 25th and 26th is bc to bc.org slash Miami 2023. Thank you so much, Sydney, for being here today. And I'm looking forward to working with you next week. See y'all in March. Peace.